I'm going to tell you how to take backup of the SQL Server to Azure Blob Storage. So first thing first, we are going to log into Azure and we are going to create a storage account. So you can log into the Azure portal and search for storage account. So when you click on storage accounts, you will go inside uh, the storage account area. Now here you can click on create. I prefer to create a separate uh, resource group for this for just for backup. So I, I, I have created a group here named SQL Backups RG. Then you just give it a name. So in this case, just give it a name that makes sense. So SQL Backups. Um, so because you know, these names are shared across the whole Azure setup, some of the names are not available. So it's better you put like your client name or your company name or something like that so that you know that name is unique so like in this case i just added noc and it is available now i usually select standard general purpose v2 for storing the sql backups next click on next uh, click on next and just finish it off then click on next and then this is all good next next and then click on create all right, so once your storage account is created, it will show up here. So in this case, this is the storage account I created. And once you are in here, you come in here under containers. And what I am doing is I actually have close to 2025 SQL servers in my environment. So I'm going to create a separate container for each of them so that I can segregate the backups. So like in this case, I have uh, a SQL instance named FSAI. So I created a container named FSAI. So I'm going to take an example for next of the SQL server. So this is another SQL server that I have and it has actually three instances running. So just to segregate it and just to identify it properly, I'm putting the server name and then the instance name so that I can recognize it when I have to download the file or restore the file. So this is my server name and this is the instance name and I'm going to hit on create now. So the container is created. Next, next thing that you will need to configure backup jobs in SQL Management Studio is the access key. So you are going to get the access key from here under security and networking. Click on access keys and then you can click on show here and copy this access key. Okay. All right. So I have copied this and now I'm going to log into the SQL server and uh, I'm going to create a credential. So I'm connected to the SQL server here, as you can see, and this is the instance I'm connected to. I clicked on new query and this is the query. I will paste this query and I will also paste the link from where I get this query. This is documented very well in one of the Microsoft document. Now this query says that it is checking for the credential named IVIT SQL backups. If it does not exist, then it is going to create and give it this name. And uh, this is the identity. So now I'm going to click on execute and it will create the credentials. Now I'm going to go into the management and I'm going to create a maintenance plan. So I'm going to right click on it, uh, click on maintenance plan wizard, then next, and I'm going to name it Azure SQL backups. I'm going to schedule it. So I want to run these backups daily at 2 a.m. Okay. And and uh, I'm going to hit OK next and I want to backup all the databases. So I'm going to select backup databases full. Click on next and on this screen all databases click on OK and backup to in this case we are going to select URL because we are going to backup to an Azure blob storage and in destination we are going to select the credential that we created so it will automatically populate here when you select this it will automatically put the URL prefix it will get it from the credential and now we need to type the name of the storage containers so as we created a container and the name of the container that we created is SQL20RGWL. As you can see here, uh, SQL20RGWL. So we are going to type the exact same name, SQL20RGWL. All right, then I'm going to hit next. I'm going to leave it as it is, hit next, and I'm going to finish it off. All right, so this is created and uh, I can close it. Now, let me run this. I'm going to run it and I'm going to execute it. It is now running. Let's come back to Azure 
and see if we see anything created there all right so this is the container let me click on it and there you go as you can see we already have dot back files in here so now it is going to run every day at 2 a.m and it is going to create the backups for us okay so now the thing here is i don't want to you know keep the backups indefinitely i want to just keep it for 15 days and delete anything older than 15 days so you can do it from Azure itself. We cannot create a maintenance task for uh, the backups which are created using the URL destination method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and if you scroll down, you will see automation and tasks. So now I'm going to create a new task here to delete anything older than 15 days in this container. All right, I'm going to click on add a task. And again, you know, I'm going to give a relevant name. So this is the task that we are going to create, delete a blob of a certain age. All right, it is connected to our blob, IBAT SQL Backup 2, and task name is again going to be SQL 20 RGWL. Blob container name, again, it is SQL 20 RGWL. So I'm keeping all this same so that you know i know task is going to delete the backups from which container expires and age is 15 and it is going to be 15 days so now you see the task name is this blob container is this and anything in this blob which is older than 15 days will be deleted next and we are going to create so now we have this uh, backup job here so if you see this, it automatically did run when we created it. So I believe I'm not sure, but this is automatically scheduled at the time when you create the job. If you want to customize the time when it is supposed to start, you can click on this job and then can open it in Logic Apps. In Logic Apps Designer, you actually can set a couple of parameters. So as you can see here, uh, this is recurrence. So this is set to reoccur at every one day frequency, but there is no time defined in here. So what we can do is we can click on it and we can select at these hours and when you select this click anywhere outside this and click on this drop down so i want to run it every day at 11 p.m so that when my backup job starts at 2 a.m by that time it it runs and it, it cleans up anything older than 15 days so this is how you can set the time when that is this specific task need to run. that's uh, pretty much of it guys thank you and please subscribe to get these kind of tips uh, from me so please subscribe and press the bell icon thank you